After an overnight flight, we arrived at Stressa, which sits on Lake Maggiore. Lovely Regina welcomed us to our home for two nights, the Regina Palace Hotel. The hotel is located across the street from Lake Maggiore and was a beautiful place to begin our visit. We arrived at the Regina Palace and found a car show on the front lawn of the hotel. Even if you were not into cars, these cars really drew you in. Check out some of the sights of Lake Maggiore. Day two took us to a little town 20 minutes from Switzerland. A unique feature of this town was the roofs, which were made from stone. Our guide took us into the wine cellar of his inn. And then we went upstairs to sample some of his wines and local meats, cheeses, and honey. That afternoon, we waited for a boat to take us to Isla Bella, or Beautiful Island. A local guide escorted us through the Borromeo Palace. It took four centuries to complete the work on the palace and the formal Italian-style Baroque gardens. Below the palace are six grottos covered with pebbles, two for rock, stucco and marble. Those would provide cool relief from summer heat. That evening, after a second wine and food tasting that day, some went to dinner to celebrate Bob's birthday. We were sad to leave Stressa, but then we traveled to Lake Orta. First, we needed to take a train to get there. Upon arriving, we took a boat to the island of San Giulio, which is dominated by its working convent. We were able to climb to the top of Holy Mount of Orta, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. There are 20 chapels dedicated to St. Francis of Assisi with life-size figures inside. It was well worth making the trek to the top for the beautiful views. We then moved to our second home for two nights, Bren Hotel de Castelli in the city of Sestri Levante on the Italian Riviera. We rang to be admitted and then walked through a grotto to gain entrance to the property. This building was our home during our stay. Prior to dinner, Ivan, our tour director, took us for a walk around the area by our hotel. Wednesday morning, we traveled by train to Cinque Terre. We toured through the area, rode a boat to Manarola, and returned back to our castle for the evening. Thursday morning, we traveled to the Carrara Marble Quarries. Driving in off-road vehicles, we climbed the mountains to get an up-close view 
of the workings of the quarry. We then hopped back into our private collect bus and drove to our villa in Tuscany. What a beautiful place to spend four nights. Hotel Villa Lecchi enchanted everyone. It is situated in the Tuscan hills. Lara, our host, welcomed us to her villa and gave us a history of the property. It had even been used during World War II by area residents as a place to hide. Friday morning, we traveled to Villa Eleccio, a family-owned villa for a cooking lesson. Giada, our hostess, is the ninth generation family member living here. We made chicken, sauce, gnocchi, and biscotti from scratch. Giotto was an excellent instructor and the meal was outstanding. Did I mention we had also local Chianti wine? After lunch, we traveled to San Gimignano, which is a hill town encircled with 13th century walls. It has 14 medieval towers, but originally San Gimignano had 72. For a change of pace, we moved from wine to gelato that afternoon. We were treated to San Gimignano's famous Gelateria Dandale. The master gelato maker, Sergio, has won many awards and his skills show in his wonderful gelato. Saturday took us to Siena, where our local guide toured us through the streets and buildings of Siena. The city is divided into 17 neighborhoods, and each neighborhood has its own flag, emblem, and contrada. The picture shows you the snail, which is one of those symbols. The most important event in Siena is the Palio, which is a horse race. It's held in the Piazza del Campo, which are the pictures you're looking at, and believe me, it looks nothing like that on the days of the races. It is jam-packed with people and horses. It takes place on July 2nd and August 16th, and it's held to celebrate the miraculous apparition of the Virgin Mary. Enjoy some scenes from Siena's Cathedral. Back to our beautiful villa, and an anniversary to celebrate as the sun set. That evening, we enjoyed dinner at a working farm and winery. The next morning, it was on to Florence, the birthplace of the Renaissance. We met up with our local guide as she toured us around to see the buildings and the sculptures. We viewed the Ponte Vecchia, the Duomo, final resting place of Da Vinci, Galileo, Michelangelo, and so many others. Some visited the Uffizi. Being in Florence was a memorable day for all. Our final morning at the villa, the breakfasts were outstanding and the dinners were even better.
Lara bid us arrivederci as we drove to our next destination, Bologna. We visited Piazza Maggiore with our local guide and visited Basilica di San Petronio. John is calling our attention to the porticos, which in 2021 were recognized by UNESCO for their artistic and socio-cultural value. They run a total length of 62 kilometers. The Basilica di San Petronio has a legendary facade partially unfinished and is the largest and most important church in Bologna. As we grew closer to lunch, we were treated to the beautiful scenes in the Quadrilatero, where you can see amazing displays of food, flowers, restaurants, and shops. It's lunchtime and Ivan gives us a bottle of his finest wine. The group gathers for another photo and we travel by bus to Venice. Of course, we can only go so far on the bus and the last leg of our journey is on a boat to Venice. We arrive at our hotel for our final two nights in Italy. After Ivan takes us around to try and get our bearings, it's time for dinner. Our last day in Italy is a very wet day, but we're troopers and we can handle it. Venice has adapted to heavy rains. Notice the platforms they've set up in St. Mark's Square. It does save your footwear. If you want to traipse through the water though, you can purchase plastic booties at many places. We took a boat over to the Murano Glass Factory and watched artists create pieces of glass which, by the way, were for sale. We gathered that night for our farewell dinner, and it was a bittersweet time as we were ready to say goodbye to Italy. Next morning, we jumped aboard, and I do mean jumped, aboard a boat and took our last looks at Venice and hello to good old New Jersey and New York. Please enjoy a few more scenes of Italy.
Thanks to all who shared their photos, and especially thanks to everyone who was on this trip. Everyone made it an outstanding, memorable, and fun trip.